Good morning, folks. Let's see here. Justin. Hello. Hey, Yang. Let's see here. A little chat going. Agenda. Um, where was I? Okay. Monday, I seem to have way too many windows open already, but I guess that's what Hibernate does for you. Hey, Derek. Hello. Okay, I'm just pulling up the latest, so give me a second here. Oops, wrong button. Move it again. Oh, share screen. There it is. Who moved the cheese? And, okay. So we'll give a minute for folks. Um, but basically, uh, just trying to make some progress on the workflows so that we can uh, get back to testing the notary clients. Hey, Omar, oh my God. It is so happy to see you. And that is your new place with a very cool sliding barn door. Ha, ah, that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> and it hasn't fallen down yet, so this is good. That's, a, that's good. <laughs> I guess you put it up yourself. Is that well, the uh, lack of uh, endorsement there? Correct, yeah. <laughs> I've done some myself. It is uh, quite the challenge to uh, get all the sizing and pieces right. There's a lot of mass to those things as they hit the bumpers. I know they're heavy, right? <laughs> all right, I'm just rambling. I was giving a couple more minutes, but um, let me get started here. So, okay. Um, all right, so if you remember, if, I, if the workflow that we're trying to, uh, project MB2, um, is we're trying to get this experience kind of sketched out so that we could make sure that, um, wow, that is like really bright. Which one is doing that? Sorry. Got way too much of a glow going on. Um, uh, so we can get the end-to-end -end workflow. So if we can get that sketch, we can see like, all right, does, do we like this experience? Like it's the, you know, putting a little bit of sample paint on the wall before we, tape and mask and paint every wall across the house. Like, do we like this experience with the splattering of paint? So we're, we've got some basic signatures. Like if you look, you know, kind of, well, that's the experience here. We've got some basic signatures that we uh, know how to generate uh, for a container image with manifests. Um, we've been trying to figure out, okay, if we have that and we know we could sign and verify something, can we get an in and out of a registry so that we can promote it across two registries and then use a policy manager like OPA to, you know, do it, put a gatekeeper on uh, whether something should be deployed, um, which of course means it needs to be able to pull something from a registry and validate and so forth. We know just for complete clarity, we know the key management is a complete black hole right now. Um, Niaz has been making some progress on that and we will fold that in. Um, so there is an assumption that keys magically wind up on users' machines um, and we need to figure out the whole key management, revocation, all the pieces that relate to that. So we're kind of just ignoring that one for the, now, for the meantime. Not ignoring it, we're keeping it in a parallel effort and we'll come back to it. 
So with that's the case, the thing that we've been discussing is how do we persist signatures? How do we discover a signature? And um, based on discovery, what is this persistence metadata? The idea of pulling a signature is pretty straightforward because we're just treating it as an artifact. So just like you can pull any other artifact, you can pull uh, a signature object. And then uh, uh, Avaral has been doing some stuff on uh, like a reference implementation with distribution. And then there's this prototype, which you'll see is exactly why we need to uh, work with some other clients because this is um, splitting atoms. Okay, uh, which some will find cool because splitting atoms is cool. So the, if you remember all this, uh, so two things actually, um, where did I put this? All right, so over the weekend, oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, I see what happened. Okay, hold on. Uh, so over the weekend, I moved the um, discussion we had around different options for persistence. So if you remember, we talked about a manifest, an index, or a manifest link through index. There was a couple of discussions on how we decided what we want or considered. Um, it turns out we had both the options and the current implementation in the same readme file. So it kind of really made it confusing for those of us that are directly involved, much less anybody else looking. So we've split this out. Now in the, the docs distribution for NV2, there's this uh, persistence discovery options, which talks about what we've done. And then the root readme, distribution readme, will have whatever we're currently thinking about. And remember, we've got this under this uh, prototype one branch, you know, assuming we merge this in. So that's kind of just a little bit of stability of what we're trying to show. Here's the thoughts. And here's uh, what we're currently using as the, the model. So with that, of the three options, we've been centering around, uh, if I have the net monitor container image, uh, and in this case, it's, uh, uh, it's a manifest, you'll see the 111M just says it's a manifest. I'm ignoring the platform for the simplicity of this conversation. So I have an image and I'm gonna push an index that has a config object that has the signature in the content of the sig uh, content of the config object. So in this case, if you remember the workflow, we've got it comes from Wabbit Networks because they're the ones provide authoring the software. Uh, I'm skipping the signature in Docker Hub just for simplicity, and eventually it winds up in Acme Rockets, and they're going to sign it before they deploy it. So here's the Wabbit Networks. It eventually gets into the Acme Rockets registry and Acme Rockets, Rockets signs that content. So that's the persistence model. And then uh, for those that are more text versus visual, I've uh, put all the samples in here. So here is just a manifest for the net monitor image. And then here's the web at network signature. Um, notice it's an image index. I, we should talk about the version in here. So long. We make a note to come back and talk about that. Um, and the config media type says, hey, this is a notary v2 uh, JWT. And it's signing the Wabbit Network's image. So those two match, right? That's that thing and that thing. Uh, and then there's the additional one. With... Oh, and then this is the signature itself in the uh, config object. And then the Acme Rockets version is duplicated. So we talked about the pros and cons, just to, re and then uh, the expansion of that, if you do use a multi-arc index, how would the signatures look for that? So you would have your Windows, notice the W for W manifest, and then the Linux manifest. These are two individual manifests that are referenced by a multi-arc index. You could have both the Acme Rockets and Web Signatures um, on the multi-arc index. And you could also have both of those on both the Windows and Linux uh, architecture specific manifests. So questions so far? I'm just close the door here. Is that just good? Everybody's kind of caught up in the recap of where we're at. So if I, I do. 
I don't quite understand what the different, so these are all the different, nine different artifacts here or nine different JSON blobs? These are nine different artifacts. Um, this, these are two, to, these three are the things we know and love today that are already out there, right? It's a Windows and a Linux manifest that represent the NetMonitor software, and that's a multi-arc index. These two and these four are signatures on those. So these are the new things. Okay, so there's a, the OCI index pointing at another OCI index in this case? Well, an OCI index can point at a manifest, which is what it's doing here, or an OCI index can point at another OCI index. Yes. Okay, yeah, I was just trying to understand what was going on here, okay. No, it was a great question. Somebody asked this, so I, I added this to make sure it scaled. I, I am finding interesting holes in the spec that don't actually seem to refer much to indexes or even manifest referencing. There's a bunch of implications there, which has been interesting to surface, which you'll see me talk about it right here, but it, it just a level set. So we have basically this and this are the same thing, it's just expanded to show a multi-arc scenario. Cool. All right, so then if we've got these things persisted and we're following with the model that a deployment makes a reference to a tag or a digest and we wanna be able to not, we don't wanna force people to change that in their kube deploy, compose, helm, whatever, um, but the environment will say, well, I'm only gonna allow deployment if X company has signed that content. Um, the idea is that I know the thing I'm trying to deploy, I don't know what the signature is, so can I get the signature objects for the thing that is being referenced? Um, and that's, that's kind of what we're for, uh, focusing on here. So the idea is I need to be able to say for a given digest, the net monitor software, can I find out what signatures support it? Now, we've been having this healthy conversation around do I have to make any changes to distribution to support signatures? Like, well, I, that's a reasonable question. Um, we believe that the implication of Notary V1 was a really heavyweight uh, solution that required people to implement to support signatures, but we don't see a way to have no impact on registries to support signatures. So we're trying to balance that with what we think is the most reasonable. Other questions came up of, why are we special casing signatures? Should we just implement a pattern that could work for any artifact type? Um, so that's the thought process that we have at this point is a thing can reference other things. Um, it's, actually seen, it's actually somewhat interesting to say, hey, given a particular manifest, what indexes are pointing at it? Like that would actually be kind of helpful um, as well. And of course, there's other scenarios like CNABs and others that'll use uh, uh, indexes, and I hadn't thought all the way through how an SBOM might be referencing other things as well. So there's probably a number of good use cases that will come up where we need to get this reverse lookup model. So the proposal basically is, you know, for an artifact, for a repo, the manifests, and this is kind of the standard thing, is there's this new API that says refer metadata. Um, Lots of conversations on naming, but let's go with the concept for a second and we can have lots of fun debates on the name. So if we use this diagram above here, if I know this is what I'm trying to deploy, and I don't care whether you use the Windows or Linux, and I know this, I did at least get the two right. Um, what, are, <clears throat> what are the signatures that are available for this? So the idea is you make a request for that digest. And of course there's the tag to digest you know, calculation that's already done. Um, and we would get a result back of descriptors plus, and the plus is the other interesting conversation. So um, this just, you know, duplicates, this just says, hey, this is the thing you asked for, which uh, looks like I actually did the, get the copy paste right this time. And here's the descriptors that come back. The interesting problem is because the way we're trying to, the way OCR artifacts works is we're really just leveraging 
the scheme, two schemas that registries already know how to persist. A manifest, which has a collection of layers, and an index that has a collection of manifests or other indexes. Um, OC artifacts doesn't change those two schemas in a registry. <clears throat> All we do is say the collection of layers or blobs that you're persisting could be something else, and we want to know that they are something else. So if you look at that, you realize that on a descriptor, the three elements will always come back as index or manifest. And if I get a collection back that says, here's all the digests, here's all the things that reference the net monitor image, I don't know whether I'm gonna go through this list and have to find out, I have to pull it first to find out, oh, this thing's actually a signature versus you know the other thing I actually care about. Or in this case, it's, I want to get just the signatures and I don't really care that there's happens to be a multi-arc index pointing at this thing. I really just want the signatures. So what you're seeing us start to tease in, and I'm not overly thrilled with it, but I'm putting it in there for discussion, is we return the artifact type, which is the config media type. And notice now I can say, oh, of the things that I just found for this thing, here are the two signature objects. I still don't know which is the Wabbit Networks and which is the NetMonitor uh, Acme Rockets one, but at least I know it's these two and I could ignore this one. I'm gonna pause there for a minute. So this is basically just to filter out the referrers that might have a signature. Correct. Well, in this case, filter in, because <laughs> um, I want, I really, well, there's actually two parts. There's actually was, in, uh, in fact, that the current prototype might have it, a way to specify the media type on this request that says only give me certain ones. The problem is this is not something you put a URL, so it has to be encoded. Is it, do we want to put it in the header? So, and the whole question of filtering always raises a lot of questions. So for now, we're just saying, let's start with the refer metadata API that brings back anything that was referencing that object. And then the client, whatever the client is, would say, I care about these two. Let me go fetch this object, then this object, and decide what I want to do with it. And this object, because it's this type, I'm not even going to fetch because I'm not interested. So it's still two hops though, or two more round trips to get the, to get at the signature, three requests total, because there's to the refers and then you have to ask for the index and then you have to ask for the, the signature. So let's, let's say we have a tag because that's what, you know, we kind of want to say is the best practice for deployment, use unique tags for deployment. So, um, so then I take from the tag, I have to go get the digest. And then from the digest, I can go get this refer and I've lost track of many. So I start with a tag, <laughs> I get the digest. So I, I make a request for a tag to get a digest, that's one. Then for yeah, the digest, I'm going to get the refers, and now I've got this list, so that's two. So now I have to ask the two additional ones in this case, so that's four, right? Because I'm making a, a request for these two. And there's another hop in there, which I'm going to ignore for a moment to figure out that I actually only care about the Acme Rocket signature because I only allow deployments to be done if Acme Rockets is on that object. So that's five. What's, what, it, what we save though is I didn't have to go fetch this just to find out I don't care. Yeah, so I, I mean, I agree with the, with the data model being proposed here, just trying to figure out, uh, just trying to think about how to optimize this. Because in, in some cases, like, yeah, you're saving something, but if you're going to have a, an AP or a specific endpoint that's trying to optimize, then it should actually be optimal, not just like yeah. save one extra hop out of like, make it shave off like 25% of the hops or something. Yeah, there is, you're going to see there's an interesting config versus uh, manifest reference that comes up as well in this discussion. And um, we're definitely trying to figure out what's the balance between purity 
and which is very generic, could be used for lots of things, but maybe so uh, performant, impactful that it's not interesting. Versus, they, you know, where's the right balance? So I, we're definitely struggling with that conversation. Yeah, I've come. I've come in here late because I think the last time I, I joined the meeting. Yeah, a lot about the data model, and I, I think the data model is right in the way that it's referring to now. I think it looks, it looks okay. good. You're referring so. back to this stuff you're thinking. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and Sam's been asking some really good questions. That's work making us kind of test that, and I, I feel the questions that are being asked are keeping us in the right center. But what, what kind of questions? Um, Sam, remind me that what I know you were asking around the, oh, you were asking about adding to a layer to manifest or something. One of the big questions that I had was, why do we really need a new um, config field in the index? And are we able to leverage the existing manifests array instead with just a separate media type for the um, the reference that's controlling where the signature is, is talking about the the thing that it is signing. So if we, is it this one? Yeah. Uh, persistence. So if we look at this one, what I think, Sam, keep me honest here. I think this is what you're asking. If I have the net monitor image, what I would have is an OCI index that is the collection, and it, this is the Wabbit signature, but instead of storing it in the config object, I actually store the signature as another artifact over as a manifest, which has a layer that actually, excuse me, the layer that's the signature. It doesn't actually have to be a, a manifest object. You could use the manifest field in the index to refer to, it, have a descriptor for pretty much whatever. And so you could have it pointing directly to a, a signature object in there. The question was just, do we really need to introduce a new con, uh, config field into the index or not? I think. So I try, I think in here, I, we went through that, try to give some conversation. Here we go. Nope, not new changes, sorry. It's new discussion, had new discussion. Okay, I'm getting my, nope. So it's in that, in that pull request, it's like one comment above the one still expanded. Sorry, say that again? It's the one that's, yeah, that one. Okay. So, so if you look at the example here, I have, I put it so that there's two things in the list of manifests in that manifest array in the index, one of which is the manifest of the, the signed image, and the other one is the, the same thing that you had had in the config field, just moved it down into the manifest. And that yes. was the question, do we really need to introduce a new config field into the index or not? So the question that this kind of teases at, so it, it, this it got my head wrapped up multiple times when we were trying to first do this, because there's multiple ways we refer to schemas and manifests. This media type is on the two schemas that we currently support, that registries currently support, image manifest and image index. What this is saying is it's not the config media type, but we're actually going to say registries will actually support yet another schema, which might be the same schema. Because this isn't the config. I think, this is the I think I'm not understanding you and you're not understanding me. Okay. So in the example that you have in the doc, mm -hmm. you have this exact same media type with that same digest and size, but instead of being in the list of manifests, you have it in a new field called config. Right. And well, that's all of what my question is. Why do we need a new field called config versus moving that into the list of manifests right here? Fair, fair. So I hear you. I think I hear you. But will let me try to echo back what 
where what where I'm seeing it. First, the index to have a config also whether there's a storage in the config or not helps us understand the signet the index is of type signature. So that's the first part. The second one, which is actually the more important one, is a list of manifests technically only supports today two different media types, the image manifest and the index manifest, or image index, sorry, image index and image manifest. And those represent um, schemas for how uh, an, an object has collections. This here would, to have it here as a descriptor, so if I understand descriptors right, maybe I'm not understanding it right, is saying that there is a different type of um, schema that we're putting in the manifest collection. So there's, yeah, there's a, a, like two statements that I want to want to tease out from what you just said. One is that um, you said that the index only supports two different media types in the manifest. Maybe I'm missing things in the spec, but I didn't see that restriction there. So that's one. The second is that you called this a signature index. And I don't know that we need to have typed indices. The type indication is really the manifest type field itself. That's telling you what you're looking at. And I don't think that we need to have a, like a separate signature type of index versus an image type of index. They're both just indices. And you look at when you're an application and you're trying to interact with this, you read the media type field to figure out what you're trying to look at. That's fair. Let me, let me deal with the, the index as a type separately. Um, because this is the one that I think will, if we can fix this, it would make a lot of optimizations better. So if I look at the image index definition, which is ironically not in distribution, but in the image spec, which is the refactoring conversation we've been having. Um, it says it's an array of objects that are, can be in manifests. And it talks about these two. Basically, this is the image manifest, and this is the image index. In fact, it says sure. Yeah, but those, that's not a restriction right there. No, it says it must support at least, it, right, which right. implies there definitely could be other things it could support. Yeah. So here is, so I, this is something we discussed early on in Artifacts, and I'm really happy to have this open this discussion again. The, if I think about the way registries parse incoming manifests, what makes artifacts really easy for registries to support is we actually didn't ask them to change anything in their incoming of parsing. They basically get a manifest that references some layers. The fact that the layers are, is the one, there's only one layer and it happens to represent a Helm chart or a, a, a foo file, a markdown file is irrelevant, it doesn't matter. The only thing a registry has to do is say, I allow other config media types to be persisted, you know, to be submitted as well. So that's what makes it super simple. The two, and we haven't dealt with index yet, right? This is all new and OC artifacts doesn't support index yet. The, that same schema processing is the processing that gets done on an index as well. When you look at an index, there is a schema for this index that is described as, uh, here. And in fact, this whole goo for the multi arc stuff is all optional. So you can legitimately ignore this when I'm trying to per persist, let's just say a CNAB. Let's take signatures out for a second because it's just loaded with all these conversations. A CNAB is a collection that has an invocation image, which is supposed to be how I run this whole thing, and a collection of other images that might get deployed. In if it would if it worked better, it would actually have the Helm chart as well as uh, Compose, whatever else that the CNAB needs. What they're doing today is they have to stuff those additional artifacts into the invocation image, which means that every time I want to deploy a different Helm chart, I have to rebake my, my invocation image, which just feels broken. 
It's like rebuilding your CLI because you're trying to deploy a particular thing. So having that collection is really helpful to be able to say that there's a collection of something else, not a multi-arc image. But I wound up going on the different artifact types for index. What I was trying to focus on is a registry doesn't need to, that knows how to parse indexes, an index, doesn't need to know these, these two would ever be any different. And if we do I say a manifest media type is different, how much more does that make it complex for registries to parse? So in, in your proposal, the registry does need to know about the signature because the registry needs to figure out how the signature. Sorry, I, I'm misspeaking right now. But like, I, I don't think this changes much. Either the registry does want to parse it or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, it can treat that um, media type, whether it's in a config object or in a manifest as opaque. I don't think it makes a difference to the registry, whether it's in, the conf in a config field, which doesn't exist yet, or if it's in the manifest field, which does exist today. It does, the manifest does exist today, you're right. Um, we still want to, right, which thread do I pull on? Um, what it's still, let's say we go with this proposal. Uh, I'll take, let me use this one here. Um, would you, you would still want to, I'm suggesting you still want to push the signature as something else because we always want to have a, a mutable objects. We don't want to have to, if I'm pushing a second signature, as in this case, I don't want to update this index. I want to be able to push, like when the, when Web and Networks offer authors the net monitor software, they might push it and immediately push the signature, that's fine. But when it goes to Docker Hub, they should be able to add a signature without changing this one. And when Acme Rockets wants to pull it into their register, they should be able to add a signature without impacting this or the other one. So Steve, I'm not suggesting a change of anything else in your proposal right now. The only thing that I'm asking is, why is it a config field versus in the list of manifests? No, I hear because you. you can still have the exact same thing where you've got a separate index that just pertains to the signature and the reference to the, the image. Mm -hmm. as opposed to the index that is the multi-arc image itself. I'm not saying that we combine them. Like, given the, the, the structure that you've laid out in this document here, the only question is why is it a, in a config versus in the existing list of manifests? No, I agree. I, that's what I'm asking. And I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get a solid base. So if we agree these are separate, then that's good. Then the question is, because now I don't have to worry about this being a multi-arc index, right? It's not a multi-arc index, it's a signature index. And now we could say that this has two references. It would have the, where's the manifest? Well, I guess that would be your suggestion here. It would have, right, hold on, where's your change? This is yours, right? Yeah. So it would have a reference to the Webit Network's image, and I would have a reference to the signature. And instead of it being, the problem is this is a blob reference. It's not a manifest reference. But this is a blob descriptor. So it's the, I'm, I'm trying to understand one thing though. So is the point of this config field and using the index in that way, is it for backwards compatibility or what's, because like, yeah, what, what Sam's proposing would be compatible roughly with existing registries today. The config method would not be compatible with the new registries. Uh, so I guess I'm trying to figure out like what is the compatibility story? And Sam, is that your, is that your main concern here? Is that if we introduce a new uh, index type that there's going to be no compatibility kind of on the day of release. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a concern. I, I don't know if I'm, I'm 
I have an opinion on whether we should or should not have the config field. I'm just trying to understand, do we have a more fully articulated reason for it? So the, there's two parts because they're pulling at each other. What's nice about this, because we're bouncing a little bit back and forth, which is fine, is this does make it more optimal on the amount of round trips I have to make. And it also says that this config object, which actually is storing data, is a little weird, right? A config should be some kind of configuration information where the signature is clearly data. So there is a conflict that we're, we're doing there. The reason that we're putting config in, the reason we're proposing putting index, sorry, config and index is twofold. The primary is just so that I can know that this index is of type signature. Where am I? Right, so I can say, actually, it's probably easier to look at this one because this index is a multi-arc index. This index is a signature object. So we're basically saying there's different artifact types. There's container images, there's Helm charts, there's WASMs, regardless of where they live, uh, OPAs and so forth. And those are all manifest types. What we're saying is there's also some other artifact types that, that make sense to be represented as an index. And a CNAB has been the most obvious one. And the idea is that a signature could be one as well because it allows me to do a reverse lookup. If we come up with, because even if we're saying that the signature is in here, and that's why I was trying to just focus on this one uh, in that other, you know, a second ago, was we're still suggesting that a signature is of type index we're just saying that instead of it being put in the config, we're putting in the manifest list. But if I query a registry for the objects that are in it, I'm going to want to know that this is a manifest. So that's a, sorry, a container image. This one is a multi-arc manifest. This one's a signature. This other thing off the screen is an OPA versus a WASM or whatever. So if I don't have a config object that says this is a notary V2 here in red, um, object type, then how do I know this index is not a multi-arc index? Science never will. I, th I guess that's, if, if we're talking about, uh, I think we had this discussion, I don't know, I don't remember when the discussion was, was it, was it the last notary call about kind of no. shoehorning the config into index and my opposition to doing that? Um, I, th I think that's kind of related to, to Sam's underlying concern is that it, it really adds more ambiguity and confusion to something that we've already, I mean, we spent the last year or two complaining about the confusion around indexes, image indexes versus artifact index versus manifest versus artifact manifest, or, or just the whole image versus artifacts. And adding config here, I, I don't think is actually the I don't actually think that fixes this problem. I think it actually makes it a little bit more confusing because of backwards compatibility issues. Um, so let me uh, ask a more basic question because this is, you know, sometimes you have to go forward, take a step back and, and reevaluate. Um, we've always struggled on how do we say a thing that's in a registry is of one or the other. Is it a Helm chart? Is it a singularity? Is it a WASM or is it a container image? or, you know, or even a CNAB. So I, I agree with, with the data model here. Like that's, that's, uh, that's um, like, I, I think it's a right approach actually having the config and the references separated. Uh, like, I mean, uh, what Sam's proposing would certainly be compatible with, with what we have today. I think, or I think more compatible with what we have today. Um, I think the data model you're proposing here is better. My opposition is specifically that we we consider that like o, an OCI index. I think we should call it something else, and I think we should just call it like a manifest index or a manifest uh, artifact manifest or something, and completely separate it from from OCI images. That's that was that's my proposal in terms of like where this should go. But I think the data model is right for from a notary perspective. The thing I'm trying to separate or tease apart is what Sam's suggesting is is ex mutually exclusive. Like we can do both, whether they're separate problems, because 
where we, if we want to store something in a manifest list that allows us to get direct access to it, that solves that solves a bunch of performance things, and that's super cool. The problem, the other problem though, is I still don't know that this index is of type signature, as opposed to a multi arc index. So that's what I'm trying to tease out of the two problems. And you could actually argue that if I know that this index is a notary index as opposed to a multi arc index then it actually frees up my ability to make the, the manifest list be a, be a descriptor list actually. And it's actually pointing to the signature directly as opposed to um, a manifest that points to a blob or a config. I, I'm not saying that very clearly. There's too many things in that conversation. Let me rephrase. How do we, how do we know that this thing, this collection, the manifest list is not as a, signature list as opposed to a multi-arc list. And that's, that's the- That's the first Sam, the answer. Sorry, say that again. I mean, I think the, the, the question is like, why do you want to, what, what's the, what do you need in order to make that distinction? Like you can look at the media types of the things that are in the list of manifests and say, oh, this one's a signature. And then I know that that's a signature. So true, like we've, in fact, Linux does, you know, is the non-extension model in Linux that you parse the, the data and you can figure out. The idea is, is there a more explicit thing that you can just say without having to parse a collection and do some inference? And is there a reason not to have a way to directly say this index is of type is a signature. It is not a multi arc index, as opposed to a registry having to process, parse the collection and make some inference around it. So if I do a repo listing in a registry, I want to be able to clearly see which what type each thing is in the registry, whether it be a digest or a tag. Is this a container image and is it Windows or Linux? Is it a Helm chart? Is it a singularity? Is it a WASM? Is it a signature? That's the simplicity of what we're trying to do. I mean, those are all things that you figure out from an index today. Like if you look at an index today, you're going to say, oh, well, I, you know, this one's a Linux ARM 64 image. This one's a Windows AMD 64 image. This one's a WASM image. That's, that's contained in the descriptor in the index right now. But it's a multi-arc index. That, that I mean, the, the, index, the index doesn't care, at least in the spec, whether it's a multi-arc index or anything else. It's just a collection of things. Right, but today, the use case is it's a collection of container images that are differentiated by a platform. That is what most indexes are today, but that's not like the spec doesn't restrict it to that. Well, true. The, the restrict has got a lot. The spec has got a lot of openness in a lot of places, which is what we're trying to take advantage of. But we're also trying to figure out how do we not break. You know, what's the minimal impact we can have to something? So today, the proposal we've been having around the config object in index set lets a container D client, for instance, when it does a pull that it would see that this is not a multi-arc index, that the, the media type, the, there either is no config object, or if there is a config object, then it doesn't explicitly say it's a multi-arc, that it says, no, nope, not for me, and just bails. And that's, that's kind of the model that we were focusing on the compatibility. If we say that this thing is still a multi, you know, basically a multi-arc index, but there's some other things in it, how does it know how to parse the different collections? And in fact, in a registry, when I list things, what you are saying that when I look at the, the index that I can see that the, you know, inside that index, there's a Linux and a Windows and an ARM and so forth. But the question is the tag itself that says it's a multi-arc index, that's what we're trying to differentiate. In fact, I think we've got this working in these here and I can show this example. Um, 
Yeah, so I, th I think one thing that I find kind of troubling about the idea of adding a field and calling it the same thing is how are registries supposed to handle that? When you push an index up that has a config field, that config field's just ignored. And then somebody goes to pull that, and like, oh, there's a config, I'm gonna pull it. The registry, you go to pull it, and the registry's like, oh, I don't have this object because it didn't know anything was referencing it because it had no idea that there was a config field. It like pushes the problem of registry compatibility down to the polling client, which is the worst place to try to handle it. I'm sorry, so like, I, I was trying to multitasking, didn't hear everything you were saying. Yeah, I was just saying that like you can you can add it, you can add support for it in the registry. But is if you're trying to use these same types, the same OCI type, this config field, the older registries aren't gonna know, aren't gonna look at that field. And they're just it's just gonna be a lost object that a client's gonna come down pull, say, Oh, uh, oh, it has a config object, therefore I'm gonna go down this other branch of logic and it's gonna fail because the registry didn't keep that, keep that type or keep that object because it didn't know that that object was being referenced. Yeah, so, so like what we, let's just go back to how we did it with manifests, right? Cause it's, this is basically trying to apply the same pattern we did on manifest to index. So on a manifest, because this thing has this media type, we know it's a helm chart and we can just pop the helm logo up here as opposed to, I think I've got a singularity one in here as well. On this tag, it's a type singularity. Yeah, and I, 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 I completely agree with this approach. Like the, I agree with the config field, like its value in the manifest type. I think we're specifically here talking about the config field in the index type, because I, I agree that like having a, a config and then some reference blobs is what we want. And we're stuck with these two, these two manifest types that are neither, we have, we have, and they have the regular manifest type, which is clearly designed around images. It has this weird word called layers in it. And then we have an index, which has no config. So we're, we're, we're stuck with these two types and we keep going back and forth about like, oh, should we put it in this type or should we put it in this type or should we, like that, that's all, that's the only reason I'm proposing it says, let's not use either of those two types. Let's just introduce a third type. Either we use, we use the existing manifest type and just say layers means, doesn't mean what you think it means or we use a new type. Because if you take index and you add config, it is a new type. It has to be a new type, it has to be a new version, and it has to be explicitly supported by clients and registries. Okay, so I just wanna, I wanna try and chip away at a couple of these separately because there's lots of different options we can go. I'm just trying to make sure we're capturing the various problems. The reason I'm trying to show these two is just that this is how we differentiate the two types, right? So I'm just trying to see where we agree that we like this. The question, yeah, I agree. If we like the way to differentiate the different types of manifest, how a manifest can be used for different types, the thought process was we wanted to take that same concept on index, that an index can either be a multi-arc index or it could be other things like a CMAP or a signature. The reason we were trying to use index for those two things, for a CNAB, it is a collection of artifacts, an invocation image, a couple of runtime images, hopefully the actual other artifacts that I would use for deployment like Helm and otherwise will be external things so that I don't have to rebake re the invocation image each time. For the reason we were wanting to use it for index, sorry, signatures, was we needed a way for something to reference something else. And if we remember in the discovery options, yeah, here we go. So in the example, let me make sure I got the right one. Yeah, so here's the example where we were exploring storing a signature as a manifest. If we store a signature as a manifest, 
How does one manifest declare it references something else? Now, we could change the manifest schema to add another property to it. What we, working with what we had, what we did, what we proposed was in the config object, this is the actual config, uh, no, here, this, the config object would store what it was referencing and a registry could say, oh, in the config object, I see what you're referencing and let me store that linkage. It felt weird that we are introducing that kind of behavior that now every registry has to pack, uh, crack the config of this particular type, uh, this, this type, to know what it's pointing at. When an index already knows how to refer, refer other things. So the question I'm kind of hearing here is, should a registries that today know how to deal with two different schemas, manifest and index, manifest being a single thing and an index being a collection of things, should we introduce a third type Yeah, my argument is if you add a config field, you are introducing a third type, no matter what. Like if you if you change the index, you can't just invisibly handle it. Like it is a third type. Oh, you can't invisibly, you're right. But that's what we wanted to use the versioning that says this property is an optional property in this new version of the schema, this evolution of the schema. It's not a breaking change, it's an additive change. We wanted to test yeah. downward clients to see how they handle it. Yeah, that was my point last time is that there's no such thing as like no breaking change. Like we learned this with OCI when we went from Docker to OCI. Like, yes, we, you, can, you can version it, you can increase the version, but it is a new type that needs to be handled. Like there's no, there's no magic that, that's gonna handle that be happened here. Well, like, fair, until container runtime clients know how to handle signatures, they sh the premise is we would version the schema and they should be forward compat aware, if that's the right word. It basically, they should say, look, I don't support anything greater than this version, so I'm not gonna accept anything until I know how to deal with it. So therefore, Derek, can I, client, I wouldn't know. Yeah, go ahead, Sam. Can I try and see if I'm understanding your concern specifically, is that uh, you're worried that a registry which performs garbage collection is going, that doesn't know about the config field is going to delete the object pointed to by the config field because there's no reference to it. Exactly. Yep, that's one of the concerns. Is that, yep. So I, I think Steve, what, what Derek is saying is that if there is such a registry, this isn't a forward compatible change because the registry will lose track of the object. It's, it's potentially a forward compatible change on the client side, but not on the registry side. Which part? Because there's, there's, we got multiple elements. Adding the new config field mm -hmm. and a new digest in there. If the registry doesn't know about it, it's going to lose track of the object that's referenced by that descriptor. Oh, in the config object, in other words. Yes. Yes. So we, so there's two sets of compatibilities, right? There's the registries, and there's six or eight of them, major registries or whatever, you know, less than a dozen, let's just say. And while there's probably less than a dozen container clients, there's how many deployments of those. So part of this is trying to wrestle where, what change and what the impact has. And the thought process is that registries today either don't support index or if they do, many of them are checking the media type and if the media type isn't of type index, they basically toss it anyway. So if we add something, being able to communicate with the various registries on the registry side is less impactful than trying to find every compute node in the world that is running a container client, a container host. Yeah, but then you're, you're still stuck in this situation where now you're trying to add a config, but you're also trying to be forward compatible or backward compatible with multi-arc images. So essentially every use of 
the index in this case is just trying to accommodate the possibility that a client may interpret it as a multi-arc image rather than let the clients explicitly say, I don't know what this is. And if it is a multi-arc image, that's fine. Just leave it as a multi-arc image. But the idea that you're just trying to like, you're, you're trying to reuse something in a way which you think that an older client will misinterpret it in the right way is kind of difficult. Like well, there's already approach where the, where the clients will explicitly tell the registry, these are the media types that I support. Right. So like we already have a way to do that. It's not always pretty, but we already have a way to do that. So I, I do like the idea of having another type that's at the root because today it's just index and manifest. The thing that we've been trying to do is figure out how do we not have a huge impact on that because what we're basically saying is for the, for the most part, how it every yeah we can artifact we can make it should registries have to know about these new schemas. That's what I'm trying to avoid. We can do this in uh, parallel too because I don't want to derail the the notary discussion, but maybe we should start up another thread on the manifest side uh, to introduce something because yeah in reality we would need to introduce this first in the manifest before we could use it in the notary um, or sorry in the artifact spec so if we introduce something there then then maybe we can consider it here but yeah i agree like we don't we can parallelize this we don't need to continue down that road and I, I knew that we're going to wind up having this discussion in the notary call in fact on the notary call the last couple of weeks we've not have a bunch of notary specific conversations because we're trying to get them blocked on this. So it's okay. Um, Can I ask a, a quick question around that? So it, it sounds like we're, we're worried about backward compatibility for registry implementations that just, that, that only focus on those two media types yeah. and that anything else they might GC out of the way or, or do something untoward with. Wouldn't that be in violation of the spec? I mean, the, the spec says that minimally those two media types are to be uh, supported and that other media types may be in play. And if, you know, I mean, it's, you know, these specs are sort of RFC light. I get that. They're, they're not hard coded specs, but I mean, given that that is in the spec, it feels like it would be in violation to say, well, it's not these two that I care about. So I'm just going to nuke those media types. Well, I think that's why that's what Sam's proposal is about, or what Sam was suggesting, because mm -hmm. yeah, the registry should not throw away I should not do that anything that's in that manifest in that manifest array. However, the, anything that's in that config field, a manifest may throw away because that was not part of the specification. You're correct. And right. You can't just add something to the specification later on, and like you have to you have to create a new version. Right. And when you create a new version, it is a new it is a new spec. Like, mm -hmm. like I know you're saying like, oh, it's just a minor version number. It's not like it's, it's different yeah, behavior. It's, it's not the same thing. So, all right, we, we're kind of at, we're at time. So um, the, the, okay. Do we, this Wednesday, I'm not sure it's on our, this Wednesday's OCI agenda. Solo folks. Or thought going to come back, but I haven't seen anything yet. Um, this is the the thing that's kind of wrapping us up to try to figure out the next steps because we would definitely want to get this resolved. Um, I'm trying to think of the right form to have this conversation because we're pulling at all the things that we've kind of got here, and a, a bunch of these are great conversations to reevaluate. That's that's the whole point of the prototype: is go forward and go back. Like nope. Turned out we didn't like that. Let's go back and change it. Um, but we do need to figure out what's the right thing to move forward with, even if we might redo it. Uh, that sounds good. Um, yeah, maybe maybe I'll talk to you more. I, I think we talked a little bit after meeting last time, Steve. But yeah, maybe we should have a try to come up with a try to come up with a real proposal that I can take to OCI for proposing. Yeah. This change or what the right way to get this changes. I mean, I agree with you with, with the config, like in the data model, like it, it's, I think we're, it's just naming and where everything goes, um, which no, is the last step anyways, after prototyping. 
and the whole challenge is do how much special casing do we want to do for signatures versus anything else? And like you, the WASM thing came out of left field, but that's the whole point of it. It's like they didn't have to do anything special. And that's what we're trying to enable and not make, make sure that as new types come up, registries don't need to do anything special. So there's, maybe what I'll do is I'll list a couple of the things that were kind of in this and then we can decide, nope, you know what, that's not important or this one's big enough that we should make a change or maybe we make this one change and now all of these new things get lit up. So um, if the- Yeah, that's kind of my hope with the artifact spec that, that we, can, we can propose a solution there from the artifacts angle and if, if the right solution is is versioning or adding a new version of the the image index, then we can. But yeah, I think we should propose this from the artifacts angle, not just the notary angle. Let me see what the agenda winds up being for Wednesday. And if the solo folks aren't coming back, then let's put this on Wednesday's conversation. How about that? Are you available? Or other? I see Sam's gone. Justin, that's kind of late for you at two. Uh, I can I can try to make sure I'm available, but. I'm, I mean, I can, I can make it any time though. Yeah, I, can, I don't mind reaching out to you and Sam and, and well, pretty much everybody's on this call. That's the point. <laughs> Let's try to find a slot where we can get a bunch of us that would uh, have interest and impact. And uh, Let's shoot for the two o'clock Wednesday. Uh, Cormac, you're muted. i sorry, put something on Slack anyway. If, uh, if you do a doc or something and put it on Slack as well. Okay, sounds good. Thanks folks. Cheers. Thanks, yeah.